You're listening to The Other 50%, A Her Story of Hollywood. I'm Julie Harris-Walker. This is the podcast where I talk to successful women who work in entertainment and hear their stories. Today I sat down with Carrie Maurer and Nina Gianelli. They're producers and founders of the production company called Heart-Headed Entertainment. They came up through talk shows and unscripted and then took their careers into their own hands to both have more meaning in their work and to create a more sustainable work and life model. We talked about working in talk, you have no idea how much teeth comes into it, and how much complementary medicine and healthy living has influenced both their company and their desire for a sustainable life inside of this business. This hour flies by. You can find us at theother50percent.com for added features, photos, show notes, and the merchandise. You can also listen on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Podbay, all the podcast places, including Spotify, iHeartRadio, and YouTube. And don't forget to check out the brand new podcast I'm producing called Exit 38. Exit 38 is the off-ramp in New Jersey where Sean Patrick Hughes and Emily Van Dyne grew up and the thing they have in common. Well, they also have in common that they are brilliant, thoughtful writers and humans. They come from entirely different ends of the spectrum when it comes to politics and society. So what happens when they start talking about the issues of the day in search of common ground? Come find out at Exit 38, available on Apple Podcasts. It will make you smarter. It will make you talk to your radio or podcast app or phone. Okay, here's my conversation with Carrie Maurer and Nina Gianelli. Have a listen. I know you guys have a company together, Hard Headed Entertainment, but let's talk first about kind of how you got to this point. So Carrie, let's start with you. Uh, What's your background? Well, Nina and I actually met at Emerson College in Boston, which is uh, both TV production majors. It's a big film TV school. A lot of people come out to LA. We had a great experience and we met when we were freshmen. So then we went to school there, came out for the LA program, and we, we both moved right out after we knew we wanted to be in LA. And and Nina actually got the job first, so our story's p- pretty much intertwined the whole time. <laughs> so she got the job first. She interned at Dr. Phil, uh-huh. and then a position opened up there, and she was like, I have a friend, because I was still trying to get my foot in the door, because I started out doing more like music videos and commercials, uh-huh. but just realized after, you know, I mean, even six months that there was really no creativity in it for me as a producer, and I was like, okay, so where is there? And, and Nina's like, well, I'm over in talk TV, so she's the one who sucked me in to that world. <laughs> That's how you do it, ladies. You bring your yeah, friends in. Yeah, it's a good place to start, though. You yeah, get a lot sure. of experience working in talk shows. Yeah, sure. it's yeah. we always tell people, like, even to this day, if I'm in an interview or anything, I'm like, I started in talk. You don't learn any faster or any more about this industry than in that because it's just so intense all the time. Yeah, is you have a lot of res- fire? We have a lot of responsibility right out of the gate. So when Let's I- talk about that because yeah. I haven't had anyone who's in talk so far. Yeah, I'm making mean, apologies if I have. Yeah, we, yeah, we like uh, we both started at, at Dr. Phil, and then Nina moved on quickly after because it it, it is a bit soul sucking there. And is it just the pace? Is it the <sighs> material? What is it about it? It's that's so the, crazy. Yeah, it's a combo of of everything. It, it the pace is is I mean you're doing five shows a week minimum. I think they even do more now than mm-hmm. when we used to. So they're shooting sometimes two shows a day, and you're um, producing one a week. And you're doing what nine, eight, nine segments? Yeah, there's a lot that. And goes so into you're it. filling in guests for every single segment most of the time because, or you know, they might overlap over two, and it's just like, and then you know, it has to be. This is all TV stuff. It has to be the right look of person. They have to have all their teeth. No, <laughs> you don't know how many teeth I've gotten people in talk yeah. shows. Teeth that was, I was like the queen of teeth when I worked in talk. I had the best dentist in, in uh, the valley. And uh, we, but it, it was, yeah, like everything had to be perfect. The story couldn't just be good. Like the person had to look good. So it would be like, but I have the best story. And it'd be like, they don't hit the demo or they don't, you know. It and was, they have to perform well in every segment. And they have to, yeah. yeah. So are you just speak, holding well, your breath? the whole time you're shooting? Well, you're hoping that they show up, really, yeah. <laughs> first. Because, you know, with talk shows, you never yeah, know if they're Nina. actually going <laughs> to get on the um, on the plane, you know, because it's sensitive subject matters. So, so they chicken out? Oh, yeah. All the time. Yeah, you'll, you know, you have to have your phone on all night, like, you know, if they're going to be flying from a different time zone. So God. it's intense. That was, yeah. But it was a great experience because we, we both learned yes. a lot. I was a researcher for one of the producing teams 
um, which meant that I was, you know, really casting, helping them cast the shows and then following through with like the stories and coming up with the creative and the trade outs. And so really like right out of college, I was doing all this and had all this responsibility, which was really great because it really trained me and made me a better producer. Because you have to figure out every single problem, every single topic, every single kind of person. Yeah. yeah. Whatever it is, you know, I, we have to make it happen and yeah. find somebody to be on the show. And if there's a show next week, we have to make that show out of nothing, <laughs> you know. And it was like a high, like, yeah, when you were like booking it and you got the perfect story. And, but yeah. we, you'd have to make a hundred phone calls, like, just to get that one story or... And, you know, they did. They just gave you a topic and there wasn't people booked. You were just like, and now I am imagine yeah. it would be much easier because the internet is so much accelerated. I mean, we, you know, oh, we're not that. I'm sure you're just weeding through. We're not that old. Submitting. Yeah. And so it's like now I'm sure it's like a little bit easier. I'm not trying to, whoever's still in talk, I'm sure it's still very tough. <laughs> <laughs> but, but like, I, I know, you know, even because people I worked with were like, we got people out of the newspapers. I mean, we were still sending FedExes to get pictures. Oh my God. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, so just like things stuff. you're not like, you don't even think about now easy would be like just take it on your phone and get like yeah i mean there's so many stories 2003 so how are you finding people in other cities <gasps> they would call in submit emails. emails a lot of emails we would okay, go so there was internet yeah there, there was, was internet yeah, yeah no we're not that old yet no i didn't mean it like that i just meant like there was um, a I didn't have internet on my first job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, and so, and it was, yeah, I mean, you were, you were still looking through articles and things like that, too. I mean, I, I, we, I would go on, like, MySpace and book guests, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Oh, wow, was yeah. it just something interesting that Dr. Phil could help with? Yeah, it would just be like, yeah, they gave us a broad topic. topic, and you just had to think outside the box, and like Nina said, it really... And then convince people to go on TV well, and talk about it. Thing. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you had to be a really good sales <laughs> saleswoman. <laughs> were there ever actors... Good question. Mm, I mean, not that I came across. No. We, no. like, tried to weed them and use our intuition always, like, to... I mean, I'm sure, like, people got by, right? <laughs> yeah. weren't exactly... I'm just debunking myths here. Yeah. Yeah, no, not in talk. No, well, I've, done, in... I've done a little bit of that in the reality show. Well, we, we, di- we also did <laughs> not, like, the Maury Poviches and the... You know, some of the other shows where it's a little yeah. more... I had some friends who booked a couple of gigs on a couple of those yeah, shows. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, I, you know, I mean, you know, who knows? Anyone could have gotten through us, but... Um, yeah, so that's where... Anyway, that's where our career started. I stayed in talk for a little while. I worked on the Larry Elder show, which was, like, one season, and then um, moved on to, like, the Tyra Banks show for a couple years after that. And then I was like, I gotta get out. I was burnt out beyond belief. And I just couldn't take it anymore. You're done with talk. I was, I was. Nina got out a lot quicker than me. And so, um, yeah, and then I moved into reality TV from there. And that's been my career for the past, I mean, I guess probably about 10, 11 years. Producing? Yeah, producing, um, doing more, like all, all different kinds of stuff. For example? Um, well, I worked on uh, Celebrity Wife Swap for all four seasons that that was going on. So that's probably my longest <laughs> run. Um, I did Married at First Sight. The, I love that show. Yeah, so I did the first season, the most successful season. So that was <laughs> that. Those, yeah, and so those are probably you know the most well known, famously single. I did as well on E. Um, yeah, and now Heart Headed. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> That's my okay, little... Nina. Yes. Tell us my, your life story. <laughs> my story. Well, I always knew I wanted to be a producer. You know, when I was eight, I said I wanted to go to California and be a producer. How'd so, you know that was a thing? I don't know. Just intuitively, I guess. It was, you know, my parents thought I was crazy because nobody worked in entertainment. And uh, Where'd you grow up? Outside of Boston on the, in the North Shore. Okay. Um, so, yeah, then obviously went to Emerson, graduated, did Dr. Phil. I stayed in talk for two years, and then I started to do, like, some of the dating shows, Little Reality, and then I ended up on Deal or No Deal for the whole run of that, which was four seasons. And then after that, I really started to do a lot more cable, like Discovery, Travel Channel, Animal Planet, um, TLC. I've done a couple of shows for them. So, yeah, did a lot of reality in recent years, like, you know, docu-series, docu-soaps. Um, so it's been a lot of fun. You know, we get to travel all over and see how other people live. I was up in Alaska for a show. I was in Miami for a show. I was in Texas for a few months. So it's a really cool experience to just, like, see, you know, how other people are living and then tell their stories. What show were you doing in Alaska? Uh, I did a show called Alaskan Women Looking for Love, where we took a bunch of girls from Alaska to Miami to try to find men for eight weeks. And then if they found love, we then took the guys back to Alaska. So it was really, like, fish out of water. Yeah. It aired back in 2013, 2014. Um, Yeah, so I love my job, and uh, yeah, a couple years ago we had the idea to form our own production company to do 
some passion projects and things that are more in alignment with us. So then let's talk about that conversation. How did that happen? Where you're like, I have an idea. Sure. Well, well, first what happened is that I actually had a health issue in 2009. So that was like one of the catalysts that kind of launched the conversation about, you know, heart headed and what we wanted to do moving forward. Mm -hmm. And then we also, there's definitely things in the business that can be cons, like sometimes like the hours or the schedule, and it can be pretty demanding. Yeah. So we really want to burn you out. Yeah, we were. Yeah, burned. we, we were, were. That was that was part of it. And we had been traveling, Nina and I, like so much, and we wanted to settle a little bit. And yeah. and we actually, funny enough, we're always running into each other on the road. After Doctor Phil, <laughs> we never really worked together again. We just never crossed paths on the same show. Like, it would be like, oh, she got on this one. Like, there wasn't any more space or I got, you know, it was yeah. like, and or I was working when something came up where we could possibly work together. And so, But we would always end up, like, in the same cities. Oh, how funny. So, like, we, we were had, in Alaska together. We were. Right? On different shows. What were you on? I was shooting um, the Palins on Celebrity Wife Swap with the, yeah, <laughs> Melissa Rivers and Bristol Palin, like, that, swap. That's in Swap? Yeah. I'm with, have yeah, to look Joan, that up. Joan stayed and Melissa came to Alaska and Bristol came and I was with like her sister. It was, yeah, it was oh, interesting. Funny. But yeah, we like saw each other there. We were in like, where else? I'm trying New to New York. Think. Yeah, up in Boston, in New Hampshire. But anyway, we'd always like cross paths like that. So we're like, we've got to like work together again. Like this is ridiculous. Yeah. Like we're such good friends. We're so like minded people. And so Heart Headed was just like important for us to form too. Like Nina just started to say, like we like love what we do so much but we just like we want to like change just some things we want our production company obviously Nina already said force for good is mm-hmm. like really important to us stuff that inspires stuff that awakens people's like heart and mind you know and that's why we picked heart headed and we just are like we have to do this together <laughs> yeah and to have like integrity and you know boundaries and balance and communication and to like reply to those emails and not just let them you know go away yeah you know so things that like we just found yeah we the kinks i guess of the entertainment system like that's what we're trying to we're trying to be the opposite of that or we are being the opposite of that i guess we should say i'm i'm hearing that what happened to you guys is something that happens to so many women when you get to a certain age like you want you want your work to have more meaning Mm. you want to have a bit more balance in your life until you go out and create it yourself yeah and And yeah exactly i mean that's exactly it like i um i had a daughter 16 months ago too and so congratulations yeah thank you so this has been in i mean hard headed has been we've been talking about it for years and years and you know they it always takes time to ground and land and yeah and and so like I want to take myself off the road you know I met my like soon-to-be husband we were having a child and I was like we need I wanted to I was ready to slow down and you know what the the whole basis around heart-headed like also came from the fact that I was like I'm bringing a kid into this world and there's like stuff going on that I don't like yeah and I'm sitting there and I'm like how do I do this like I don't I can just throw money at an organization. I can do this. And then I'm like, light bulb, like, I'm part of the media. Like, hello. Like, yeah. I have, like, the it's biggest platform. Yeah. <laughs> and so, like, that was part of it, too, is, like, I'm like, Nina, let's, like, let's do this now. Like, we're both ready. We're both at a point where we're, like, ready to slow down and, like, do our own thing and, and really ground this. And so that was part of it, too, just, like, what can we put out there that we feel like is going to make a difference, you know, and not just, you know, work for somebody else and put out these fun shows. Like, yeah. we've worked on really fun shows shows like we've had a great time yeah and we also feel like there's a lot of fear-based programming and a lot of conflict-driven programming and we definitely realize that there's an audience for that Mm -hmm. but we also feel like there's an audience for positive programming and inspirational content that really isn't as out there in the mainstream media as much as maybe people would like to see it yeah so what does that look like for you guys are you developing shows are you pitching yeah so basically so one of the biggest show ideas we're trying to get sold right now really was inspired from my health issue because when I got really sick, Western medicine had no idea what was wrong with me. And so I was really put on this holistic healing journey to get well because Mm -hmm. like the doctors were like, you're fine. And I was like, I feel like I'm dying, but okay. They're like, take some pills. You're anxious. I'm like, I'm anxious because I feel like I'm dying. Oh, little lady, you've done too much. You just have to rest. Exactly. So through that journey though of healing and 
like meeting all these different practitioners and working with functional medicine doctors and acupuncturists and chiropractors and I could go on forever. I was like, there's like a show here, <laughs> you know, there's because whole world. it's a, such an untapped world. There's so many modalities we don't know about. There's obviously so many issues that people are having. And so really one of our passion projects that we're trying to get sold right now has to do with holistic medicine in this kind of world that people don't really know about. And for me, like I was feeling pretty hopeless when Western medicine, like these experts that we're all trained to look to for help were like, man, we don't really know. Like you're fine. You know? So if with the show we can help some of those people that might be feeling hopeless and not well right now, um, then that would be mean everything to me to like pay that forward. Fantastic. It's my jam. I I had chronic fatigue syndrome at one point in my life, and I went into a doctor who was like, well, perhaps you should eat an extra banana when you're feeling that way. I was like, you are not helping me. Like, Western medicine was not interested. So you can relate. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. So I was the, I was that person. So yeah, so you know, we're very tapped into that world. I actually do energy healing too. I do pranic healing and reconnective healing also. Um, and we have a lot of contacts and uh, we actually shot with Heart Headed a web series last year with a survivor of the Boston Marathon bombing mm. who actually decided to heal holistically. So we actually have done, we actually have like a mini web series with her we shot a sound healing, an energy healing, and an acupuncture slash NET session, which is neuro-emotional technique. Um, and that was kind of like building up to her running the Boston Marathon as kind of like part of her healing and coming full circle. And so we did shoot those three videos that are on the web, on our website and on her website, which was great because it's kind of like the show on like a smaller scale. Yeah. And I think that would be hard to show. I mean, I, how do you show yeah, well, holistic that's... medicine? Because the, you know, how do you show energy healing? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is, it's, it's, it is a, like a tricky thing to like get visuals on like a yeah. lot of, you know, like this energy stuff. But like, you don't realize that like, especially when someone's really sick, like they go into these sessions and they come out and it might not be instantaneous, but they look different. Mm -hmm. Like they really do. And it's not dramatic. It might not be as TV dramatic as like, you know, you think of, but like, it's not extreme makeover. No. Well, exactly. It's not like biggest loser where they shed 200 pounds and like, you're like here, but, but I mean, even like in, I've had my own health issues too and, and have, I've done acupuncture since I was about 15. Like, that's my... It's the best. That's the best. It is the best. I will promote it forever and ever, and I will send everyone to my acupuncturist because it, it helps me with, like, everything. But Did you do it while you were pregnant? Like, uh, morning I did. sickness? Mm -hmm. It's a yeah. miracle. Yeah, it, it was amazing. And, tr and trying to get her to come out because she didn't want to, too. I was trying to get my into labor, but mm -hmm. that didn't work. <laughs> she was Babies determined. come when they're going to come. She was determined. Um, but, yeah, and so, so there are, like, the energy healing, I mean... It looks kooky because really a lot of it is them people standing around a person and not touching them and their hands right. are all over and, and people are... At, but I think that's the cost of like kind of the appealing part of a show like that is that you could get to see it and like can see that little transformation. And even if it's a d next day, if we're following someone, it's like, you know, this woman who was doing the marathon, each session you can just see the difference. You can see it in, even in the sound healing. I mean, there's profound... Like she's she's having a profound healing in that moment. She's yeah. crying. It's, there's an intensity, even in the energy healing session that we shot, you could see that he was pulling something out of her and she's like wincing and you can, so it is actually getting conveyed through the shooting. But yeah, so that's, that's where we are. We're, we're in pitching that. So if you ever see the two of us like sitting in a car, like meditating before, we're probably going into a pitch. <laughs> That's what, story. That's what we like we sit to sit in do. parking garages before pitches and meditating together. Well, we meet up and we <laughs> sit and we're like, all right, let's get grounded and let's like get centered and let's let's get our energies together and then we go in. I mean, that's I what hard I will all sing. About. I'll sing show tunes while I'm driving and then meditate in the parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> totally, exactly. So we really try to practice what we preach too. So even like all the. Um, everything like about hard headed and with the show and like acupuncture, like we both do acupuncture and like, we're really like living the show that we're yeah. trying to pitch 
or we are pitching, but trying to sell. Well, then you can talk about it with passion and conviction, and well, that's like it. this. Yeah, 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 yeah that's totally. exactly it. We you know we can talk about it forever because it is <laughs> we because we do live it, and we and and that's what heart headed is too. I mean, that's why we named it heart headed, obviously, because mm-hmm. you know we try and live from the heart and not in this fear, and that's what we want our production company to be all about. And you know, when we're hiring people on, you know, we want to always find win wins. We always want to you know like respect them and give realistic expectations that maybe you know because for years that's not what we got and we felt like we would leave like a little piece of ourselves with each show and then have to try and collect it back up over the years and that's not what we want people you know we want to leave the experience feeling enriched and feeling like you had something added to you and not taken away and like you know maybe people probably are listening to this and sounding like oh yeah well that's very like that would be ideal and but we believe like that can happen totally we believe that like we can be in this industry and not be totally soul sucked and like totally exhausted and and we have methods for keeping ourselves from getting to that point you know so and I think the biggest reason why I got so sick after the first six seven years of my career was because I was abandoning myself on all these shows and Mm -hmm. you know working seven seven days a week and working till midnight and then back at 6 a.m and and saying yes and yes being like the yes girl all the time and I and I do think that that played a big part in like why my physical body ended up suffering so much Of course. Yeah. And I can't tell you how many people, uh, how many women I'm hearing this from now, is that we want to create a different culture within the production environment because the way it is isn't working. And I don't know, maybe does it work for men? Can they just work until they drop, but then they have a heart attack on set? Like... Well, and that's it. Yeah. I mean, I just lost my mentor, one of my favorite people that I've worked with ever, who actually did have boundaries and things like that. He did. He he passed away um, in 2016, right? Yeah, twenty end of 2016 from a heart attack out yeah. of nowhere. He was still, he was probably in his 50s. God. And that's exactly it. And he worked himself to the bone, and he was like more of a grounded person than I've worked with, uh, you know, like yeah. of anybody else. And he totally like understood uh, the idea of like you have a separate life outside of production and things like that, which was, and for him, you know, I mean, he still gave so much of his life to like this industry and, you know, so, I mean, I've seen it happen to men too, but yeah, I don't know because it is, I mean, we do probably talk to more women about this than we do But men, it can, right? it can be different. And I think the more women yeah. you have in positions of power who have this attitude, I think the more it can change and become like an industry that people can thrive in and not just work Definitely. themselves till they die at their yeah. desk. And that and it, and hard headed's really about like living your truth. Mm-hmm. You know, which isn't always easy, but it can it can be and it can happen. I love it. So it's a job and it's a mission. <laughs> yes, yes. Exactly. <laughs> that is 100%. Yeah. <laughs> what are your greatest hopes for it? Uh, the great, I mean, definitely to sell the show about holistic medicine and to be like showrunners on that show mm-hmm. and to really have that be a hit and be successful and reach the masses and you I know, would watch it and to create a community like through that too, like so people can be connected maybe that have similar issues or people can connect with practitioners in their area. So if they're suffering and they're in Texas or Miami or wherever they are, like having like, you know, contacts locally for these people that have these issues, like, oh, here's my acupuncturist that's like, you know, down the street. And so really like helping people in a big way. Yeah. Um, That's really the vision. And healthcare is so broken right now. Yeah, it's awful. I mean, it's hard. It's hard to even yeah. defend it. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's such a mess, and it's for profit, and it's so drug heavy. And but at the same time, people who talk about holistic medicine or other modalities are often so viciously attacked, yeah. like by the internet. I don't know if people are that vicious in real life. No, they are. I think. Mean- <laughs> We yeah, like, for sure. They think it's like hippy dippy, but yeah. I mean, I'm like a living testimonial because like I survived because of holistic medicine. And mm-hmm. I don't know where I would be without it. And I think that's like a major goal for us too is like get something out there mainstream so people can see like if, you know, season one has to be like the most dramatic of dramatic things so that we can get it out there. We're willing to go there, you know, and then like we can really, you know, even show some smaller stuff that that and the little bit crazier as people would call it as I do air quotes because it's not crazy it actually works but so that we can like do these shows and not just one but make it mainstream so that it's Mm -hmm. people aren't sitting back saying oh I have all these ideas but no one's ever going to put that on television we're like no we know we can get to to help others right what one of the things I've noticed lately is that 
all the major networks, their biggest support are pharmaceutical companies. Mm -hmm. So it's really hard to get, even in talk shows, messages that are not about big pharma. Yeah. How how are you going to overcome that obstacle? Well, that's what... Meditating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to meditate our way. <laughs> well, you know, we had a pitch, our first pitch of the show out, and she basically was like, we don't know how we'd raise the the money uh -huh. for what we think you we would need for to do the show and we're like well like why can't we like find the other way around you know like some of your normal advertising and you know they passed on it and that's fine we, we were like we'll, we'll keep moving forward but I, we think that we can find the the people that there's so many large companies out there that do this like holistic yeah. and this alternative medicine and um, What's Boyron doing? Yeah, yeah. It's like, and the world's such a big place, and I, I do believe that there's somebody out there that will believe in us and will believe in this project. And there's so many avenues to get it out there, even if it was like streaming to start, let's say, you know, on like a Hulu or a Netflix or mm -hmm. you know, digitally um, nowadays versus 20 years ago. So I think it's just a matter of like connecting with those people, those like-minded people. Um, well, and it's also we're not like 100 percent against. Western medicine, like not we, at all. there's a place we believe. There's a time and a place. Like if you break your leg, I'm not going to say go get acupuncture. I'm going to say go get your leg set and then maybe get acupuncture <laughs> to like help you through that. Right. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> and it's like if yeah, if you have to have surgery, if like your, your heart isn't working and there's something there, like yeah, sure, like have the surgery and then like let's change your lifestyle right around it. So so we're it's like we're not looking for a show that's like bashing that side, and mm -hmm. we Definitely believe not. there's a place for it. It's just a show to say this all can work together. Yes. And we ca it can exist without people feeling like oh oh, no, 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 we have to push back on these, these like, weirdos over here doing this, and it just, you should just go to your doctor, because we're not saying that you should only go to the energy healer. We're saying you should take care of yourself, and, yeah. you know, like, we will obviously be responsible about it. So it's not like we're going we're going to go out there, and it's like, boo, boo, boo. We're not going to say boo Western medicine. We're just going to say, look what else we can do. You're not having any luck. Look what else we can do, right? So I think that's also, like, the way around it, to look at it in that light instead of, like, we're against, you know, you. I mean, hopefully we don't have like these <laughs> pharmaceuticals saying in the middle of the show saying hey go ask for this from your doctor because that's just that is crazy that they literally tell you what to go ask your doctor for now i know isn't but, that nuts and the video nuts. is all dancing in wildflower fields. it's nuts they're always like at sunset it's beautiful and you're like yeah i want to feel like that but that's, <laughs> i'm gonna take that what was that drug yeah what was it do i even need it let me just go ask my doctor <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, and besides the holistic show, we do have a couple other show ideas we're developing. And the other big thing, the other big, like, arm of Heart Headed is doing a lot of web-based programming. Mm -hmm. So doing, like, these videos for really anybody and everybody that may want a video. You know, ideally, again, Force for Good, maybe people, the change makers, or people that have a product or a service that's, you know, really benefiting people. Um, like so that's, branded content? Yeah. yeah, that's really the other side of what we've been doing, working with clients and doing uh, the digital side as well as developing great. shows. Yeah, we're loving that. Yeah, it's great. I mean, obviously it's huge right now. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. where it's at, for sure. Yeah, everybody's yeah. got to have a video. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, blogging is over. You need a video. Yeah. <laughs> vlogging. <laughs> yeah, it's vlogging now. Um, what, do you, what do you make of kind of this last year and the state of women in this business and in the world? Yeah, I mean, it's it's intense, yeah. and it's great. <laughs> it really is. We we love what's going on. We actually even, like, in the reality world, they started, like, a women working in reality Facebook group, mm -hmm. and it's been, like, amazing. Like, yeah, we've loved group. it. Like, we've needed, like, you know, a DP or, like, on there. You just have a question, you're on there, and women helping women is amazing right now. It's yeah. always been like that, but now, like, there's, like, this call to action, and it's 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 powerful let's just say that's the only word women I can have use. stepped up they yeah. have and it's about time because we can do it we, we really can and it's people and it's just about finding your voice and i mean that and is it's, and it's great that they've like where we have found our voice i feel in the past year more so collectively than prior yeah collectively more than prior years so yeah it's been great that there's been so many voices heard this year. There was something, like, collectively happened. I was talking to someone yesterday, and she's like, we all just got fed up. I was like, on the same day, yeah. apparently. Literally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know us, you know, like, women, it's like, you just, like, one of us is like, yeah, 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 I feel that way, too. You know? <laughs> me, too, like, me, yeah, too. Yeah. You're like, I've had that happen, I've had that happen, and, like, yeah, I think it's, like, really awesome that 
all of everybody and everything that's going on, not just the harassment, everything, women are just coming out and speaking up and like taking when they have the moment, taking the moment. Mm Because, you know, I think that's a big problem with women is like, you know, we're taught to be a little bit more docile and like, well, agreeable and and humble. And it's like, no, be proud. And, you know, (laughs) if you have that 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 time to showcase, like, you know, scream it out and be happy. You don't have to be like, oh, yay, thank you. Okay, that's it, you know, and (laughs) and move on. I think it's really great. I try and like work on that in myself like every day because I'm oh, I'm much shyer person and like much more sit back and watch everything happen and that's why I'm a producer and I'm behind the scenes yeah. and so even being here today is is even harder for me <laughs> you're doing fine <laughs> it's like you have to consciously think okay I'm not gonna say sorry yeah I'm not gonna yeah. put a smiley face on every email I send out right yep. <laughs> yeah yeah even though I still totally do yeah yeah uh did you have mentors that's a good question. Um, yeah, I feel like off and on over the years, um, I definitely feel like later in my career, I had really great women and men mentors that were really uh, great leaders and led from a place of love and not fear and uh, really were team players versus like the first half of my career, it was more fear-based and <laughs> keeping me chained to a desk. And <laughs> So later on, I definitely had some executive producers that I looked up to and still look up to, for sure. That's so interesting how the language is changing. Because it used to be just, you're paying your dues. And now it's, that was fear-based leadership. (laughs) And I think you're absolutely right. But it's so interesting, the shift in people's language, how they're starting to talk about leadership and management in such a different way. Yeah, I mean, I definitely feel like early on in my career, a lot of shows that I was on were being led by fear. And again, like they were obviously in fear from like, be it the network or be it the talent or be it their boss or whatever. And it's like everyone's operating out of place of fear and we're running around like chickens with our heads cut off. It's just not productive, you know. And then as I, you know, progressed along and met other executives um, who were really in their power and knew their value and knew their worth and weren't trying to prove or defend or, you know, and then those were the executives that really kind of like lit up a room and you like wanted to do like show after show with them, you know, feeling like, wow, like you're such a great leader. You and inspire. Yeah, totally. Leading with love and like emphasizing team and not I and so, yeah. yeah, for sure, I've had a handful. Well, it's funny that how the stakes are so huge. I had a friend that I grew up with, Anna, if you're listening, because um, I'd be so stressed out at work and freaking out and upset, and, and she was like, well, what happens if you make a mistake? And I was like, well, everyone's going to yell and get mad, and she's a nurse. She's like, well, if I make a mistake, someone dies, so maybe you could get a little perspective. Totally, yeah. like, totally, but oh, yeah. it's like almost like they We're make just making us, TV here. They oh. make us feel like it's someone's going to die. Like but it's then life you're like, and death. Yeah, it's really not right. life or death. This is not an emergency. No, like, they really yeah. do. <laughs> no one's bleeding. Yeah, I like it earlier in my career, like I would just be like, I'm not going to stress about this anymore. My whole, what was my like line? I would always say like, it's going to happen because it has to. Because like they made you feel like it has to. And there's, so I would just be like, it might be 3 a.m. the night before and I need a guest, but... I will find it by the 10 a.m. shoot because it just has to happen and I wouldn't sleep. And, and I, you always did, right? Yeah, it always does. Like, it always does. It always yeah. works Something out. Something always happens. Yeah, but, I mean, I had... My my mentor um, was the man I was just speaking about earlier who, who passed. Um, but he was, like, so great because, like, his line was, like, life first, producing second, mm-hmm. where... That had That's never rare. met anyone in this industry who would ever say that it was always, like, producing first and life second, 100%. <laughs> and so, like, when I met him, I mean, he was just, like, a just a really gentle soul to begin with. But he was just, like, no, like, I mean, I was, like, in, like, let's just give an example. I was in, like, ten weddings. And it would, like, I was, this was on the run of Celebrity Wife Swap. And, and so that was going on for years. And I'd be, like, I have another wedding. Be in. He'd be, like, you're of course 20s. you're going. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> And I'd be, he'd be like, of course you're going. And I know that's the smallest thing, but I would be, on any other show, I would have been so scared to ask mm-hmm. to, like, be in my sister's wedding, you know? It was like, it, like I mean, that was how intense it would be. And so, like, meeting someone like that and seeing how he led, he was really, like, a huge mentor. And I feel the loss, like, a lot, especially because he knew I was starting this this business and my own production company, and he was so excited. And he was helping us with, like, our show that we're pitching, and he sold shows, you know, and, and like, so I feel it every day when I'm like, I just wish I could call him up because, you know, I mean, and he was a, and of course, you know, he was a man.
male figure in my life, but I, I had the experience in the beginning of my career where females weren't really willing to help me, which I think is, was, a, it was the opposite. It was the opposite of what I feel yeah. like is changing right now. The shift that I'm feeling where women like are getting changing. behind each other instead of it feeling like that whole fear base of like, well, if she moves up, I can't move up because right. there's only there's so many. There's one spot. Yeah. And it's just, that's just, that's just not true. And it's never been true. And like, in my, you know, I wanted to have these women mentors coming up and I almost felt like it was like you I couldn't even find them you know but um now you have to be them threatened that's what yeah. that I say it to every person we talk to I'm like I want to like help you <laughs> like yeah. because I did have great people be and not just the one person I did have some great people really help me through my career and um I want to do that for someone else and and that's like really really important to me do you want to say who your mentor was oh yeah his name was Bruce Toms hmm. yeah he was amazing man and, and a great producer he'd been in the industry since reality tv started basically and did he do real world <laughs> He did um, Road Rules, yes, See? yes, yeah, exactly. Uh, yes, he did, and he started, um, you know, production companies and had many shows that he were his, and yeah, he's really missed by a lot of people. Yeah. So not just me. Uh, he I, he was a mentor to many. So yeah, so that's a sad, sad uh, loss in the industry. But but, but we're all he's gonna yeah, we're all gonna sure. live. Yeah, we'll all live like through what how he taught us to and. And move on, um, you know, and be better producers because of it, I think, for sure. So, yeah, it's, so, yeah, Bruce. <laughs> yeah. So, you have a baby now. I do, yes. How are you working that out? <laughs> it's very, very hard. It's very hard. I mean, I've, it's been a blessing to be able to start this company when I, like, really start it when I was pregnant. So, like, you know, really, like, hit the ground running and just say, like, this is what we're doing. And, like, you know, when this baby comes, I'll just, like, continue on. But, yeah, I mean, it's a struggle, like, every day to, like, get things done. I mean, I, she's uh, loves her mom, as they do at this <laughs> age. And so she's, like, you know... I'll, we have, like, conference calls or anything, and she's, like, on top of me, and I'm, yeah. like, Nina, I'm going on mute until I go up for the <laughs> so moment, text me. and she's finishing, so it's it's a juggle, but, I mean, I, I mean, I love it, and, like, some days I just want to, like, fall over on the floor and just lay there, <laughs> but, um... It's not easy. It's not easy. But how old is she? She's 16 months. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so she's, like, you know, she's been walking since nine months, so she's kept me <laughs> super busy, so um, I would, like, look back to, like, when we, when I just gave birth, and... We pitched a show, like, 10 days out of me, like, giving birth. Like, I don't even remember. Wait, 10 days before 10 days 10 after? 10 days after. Are you kidding me? And yeah, I, like, true. don't even remember. My mom was in town to watch her. She, like, took her for a walk, you know. Like, I think I was, like, breastfeeding in the car. And, like, we came out of the meeting. And he was like, how do you think why? I'm like, I have no idea. I haven't slept. Like, I still, I had a, I had a C-section. I, so I was, like. Oh, you were a mess. I was a mess. and, and You yeah. should have been out of the house. <laughs> yeah. And, but I was like, we got to move on here. And Did I, you sell it? Uh, no, no. <laughs> it was, that would have been a great story. <laughs> that would have been great. Not yet. But yeah, I mean, I bought like a lap desk, like, you know, table. And so I would be like breastfeeding her on a conference call with her, like computer on the table. I miss those days because she stayed still. Yeah. But, so yeah. Before you miss, she's mobile. Yeah. Now, now that she's mobile. But yeah, I mean, if, you know, this age old saying of make it work, like somehow you I just do, do like every you day. Do. Yeah. And who has she, not had a conference call while pumping? I mean, it must, there, everybody <laughs> has to, every yeah. mom. And like, yeah. And, and Nina's learning what it's all about as well. So <laughs> I think from the gates. Yeah. So she'll be prepared if, <laughs> If it comes getting the preview, the, yeah. yeah. So it's no, lot. but but it's been amazing, and I mean, she's such like a a good spirit, and she's I mean, she's like our little mascot. I know like, she's for, so sweet. <laughs> for the company. She's adorable. She's why we're doing this too. She's why it's you know yeah. to show her like her mom and and her auntie are the ones you know starting the company. It's not just like her dad or whoever you know maybe back in the day it would have been. Yeah. So yeah. So that that's also really. I mean, she's so much of an inspiration for this because I was like, I'm bringing a baby into this world. I gotta get stuff out there that's <laughs> positive. <laughs> that's positive and gonna change something because yeah. things have to matter now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And she's she's a mixed race child yeah. too. So like that's really important to me that mm-hmm. like you know the state of the world is a little crazy. Wait, well, in the right city. Yeah. Well, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. So she, it's it's pretty great and pretty crazy and yeah. She's. She's a handful. Are you mentoring any younger people? We do actually have an intern right now that... We've had a couple, actually, women interns that one... The most recent one actually just graduated from Emerson. So... 
Uh, she just joined us like a month or so ago, and uh, she's great. Yeah, she's really a go-getter, and she's had a hard time finding a job after graduation. So it, we felt like kindred spirits when we connected with her, and um, we're hoping that, you know, through working with us, that maybe we sell the show, or as we get, you know, busier and busier with clients, that we can give her more and more work in the coming months ahead. So Yeah, give her a launch pad. Yeah, well, we're exactly, really also yeah. help, hoping to, like, not start her off in that, like, abandon yourself, just do whatever, like, kind yeah, of Yeah, whatever it takes. Yeah, Be realistic with, like, you yeah. know, what we're giving her and deadlines and not just, like, we need it tomorrow and here's 20 things we need. You know, yeah. we're trying to be and like, just, oh, here's a couple weeks to work on this stuff. And Yeah, and hopefully helping her find, you know, because we didn't really know what we wanted to do. Like, reality TV was, like, existed when we were in college, but it wasn't something you, like, were, like, like, well, that's what I'm going to do, right? Like, yeah. They, it was like, oh, that's a career. I'm yeah, go. no. And, like, now, like, people go to, like, school to be, like, producers in reality. You know, it's they like. They do? Yeah. I mean, well, at Emerson. I mean, at Emerson, maybe. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, yeah, to be, to, like, that's a that's a genre that, like, we never even touched that's on. That's a thing. And so, yeah. And so, like, you yeah. know, she's young and and hungry. And that's all, like, we were looking for in someone. And we love to bring someone from our um, alma mater and everything. Yeah. So, yeah. So, we're just hoping that we we teach her something so she goes out there and takes what she wants and doesn't just take what, like, comes to her. Because that's kind of what we did for some of our... Oh, yeah. Definitely. Just, like, say a, yes. This is a career you fall into. Mm -hmm. And you kind of yeah. fall into whichever direction that you're in. Totally. Especially it's, in the beginning, you feel like you can't really pick and choose and you just have to, like, take right. whatever's getting offered to you. Right. Yes. And you don't know. So you're like, let me try a hundred things. And, right. Exactly. Yeah, totally. And it all works out and you learn from every single one. And, you know, you, you look back and you never would take any of it back. I would take, like, some of the... <laughs> there was that hour job. weeks. <laughs> like the some of the lack of sleep back but well like. most of the jobs are less than six months usually unless you're on like a long-term show like for deal or no deal I was on it for four seasons but a lot of them are you know maybe like two months or six months so even if it's horrible you know there's an end in sight yeah <laughs> you know? that's the thing is it's always going to end this is yeah. the rest of your life exactly until you do 10 shows in a row like that and then exactly. it feels like it's your whole life yeah, exactly. Exactly. What advice do you have for young women just getting into the business? Well, I mean, um, I think we've said it a lot, but our our like main thing is that like stand in your truth as like Nina speak keeps your saying, truth. but just don't feel like, you know, like that just because you're the youngest one or that you're the least experienced or you're the middle experienced that you just have to like go with what everyone's saying. Like be who you are, like bring what you have to offer to the table because I think when we were young we kind of like push that down sometimes mm -hmm. just to like get things done and sure that's you're gonna have to do that in any career but like Except at the same time no one wants a lippy PA right exactly like you <laughs> yes true. of course like you so how do you balance that well I just think that like I mean, I think it's the way that... I think it is a balance. I, I think guess. it is so a balance. Knowing yeah. when to speak your truth and have a voice and set some boundaries and knowing when, too, like, you got to step up for the show or you got to get... You have to get it done. So I definitely think it is a balancing act. But I think that more than anything, just, like, you know, knowing that everybody, whoever you are individually, is unique and brings something unique to the table and feeling, like, comfortable bringing that to the table and not feeling like you're not enough or it's a stupid idea or, you know, like, throw it out there and, you know, you never know what's going to happen. Like, even at Dr. Phil, like, I had, like, a show that went to sweeps an idea that I had pitched like right out of the gate and like who knew right yeah <laughs> so yeah just you know know that like you're enough and that whatever ideas you have are good and one of them will stick eventually <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, and I think I think we can't say that enough especially to young women is you are enough mm -hmm. you have something to say and you can say it because yeah. yeah. it's so against conditioning yeah, totally totally it is and that's how we moved up in our careers is because we we were a little bit different and it probably got me in trouble a few times but but just you were a lippy pa i was why well, I, I i think i like knew my place but sometimes i was like she's way this, more sassy than me but i would say this idea is good and they would say you know what it is sometimes you know sometimes they'd be like all right <laughs> and i we could take it Next. out of the meeting but it's like you know you know i just felt like i have all this creative stuff going on don't like stop don't stop, like, it flowing. Just, like, you know, write it down. If, like, you don't get to say it in the meeting and yeah. then tell your producer on the side. That's what I would do. And I'm like, I didn't, I didn't, I never really had this huge ego where I, like, needed the credit. I mean, that's always nice and it feels good, but I never really had that where I was like, well, I need the credit because that little thing was mine. Where in this industry, you find that a lot, you mm -hmm. know? So be happy with yourself if, like, that your idea got on the show. Because it's you know it's your idea, you know? And, like, be proud that, that that happened. And when you go into an interview, boast about it there if you couldn't do it, like, with your bosses and they wanted to take credit. Because 
you you did that no matter who says who did it right yeah. it's like the the executive producer might always take the credit but like a lot of times the ap or you know the segment producer is really the one kind of <laughs> running it and i would also say too to anybody any of the young women listening that if they're interested in tv production and you know aren't working right now like hit us up like we're always meet with somebody or <laughs> talk to somebody <laughs> or you know, you never know, right? And sometimes we contract out depending on the project. So how do they reach you? They can go to um, heartheadedent.com. So heartheadedent.com and just send us an email and either of us will answer you right away. Or, or our we'll... numbers are, are yeah, our oh, cells yeah. are on this, the website too, our phone numbers. So if they want to call us. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You guys are brave. Yeah. yeah well, we're brave. I, Put it out there. You have to. Take them up on it. Yeah. <laughs> contact us. You never know. Take them up on it. How how do you recommend people get their first jobs? That's a good question. I mean, for us, we went to Emerson, who set you up with a really great program in L.A., and, and we um, we interned. And Nina's internship turned into my job, too. <laughs> my first job, too. That's two for job. one. Yeah. I mean, I did, I did stuff in commercials and stuff before that, but just work. I mean, just, like, go out there and apply to everything and, like, yeah. write a nice cover letter. Yes. Please. A cover letter write goes a, a long nice way. cover letter that's not super generic and pay attention to the company you're sending it to. That's, like, so important because we're even, like, now being in the hiring positions like sometimes it's like it's just an email with a resume and I'm like I'm not even going to look at this probably because I want to get a feel for you we're like really intuitive people too so we want to get a feel for who you are and and look at our website first before you send us an email because that would it's really nice that even if it's just one little line that says something like and really spend time on stuff like that because it still matters. And it's a society that moves so fast now and text messaging and things like that. Like, we're totally all about using technology to our advantage, but, like, those little things still matter. Yeah, and I think just, like, talking to people about, like, what you want to do and networking however you can, be, be it social media or through friends, and, and definitely applying for everything. And just take the meeting, even if you don't maybe want the job. Like, take the meeting because you never know. Like, maybe that position doesn't work out, but then they have something else that might be a better fit for you, but you didn't even know about that position. So you never, like, know how things can unfold. Always take the meeting. I, yeah, always I mean, take the meeting. That has been my advice for Nina for, like, 15 years. Because <laughs> I'll be like, like, should I take it? I don't, I don't know, know if I want to do this. You know what I say every time you go into the meeting, you take oh, yeah. the phone call. It's good advice. It's good advice. You just you, take it so as it far. It sounds like she's taken the advice. She has. She's oh, yeah. not saying the advice. We, and you got to take it as far down the road as you can. You know what I mean? Take yeah. it as far down. To the deciding point. Yes. Yes. Until an offer's on the table, too. Like, nothing's gone. And this industry moves fast and really slow. It's like, you know, the hurry up and wait mentality that everyone talks about. It's true. And so it's like, it could go away and come back in two days. Like, it's Mm -hmm. like, I mean, we've seen ourselves, like, I've been in a different state, like, 24 hours after talking to somebody to, like, start something, you know. Not my ideal place to be right now of course right. but back when you know we were younger that was easier but I know one of my favorite stories is I was up in Pasco Washington casting a show and mid casting they canceled it <laughs> <laughs> so we still had to do the casting call because I'm literally there with a bunch of construction workers so we continued with the casting call but I was like this is all for nothing because they just canceled the show oh man yeah. but you were nice enough to see them all of course of course waiting always. In line all day of course yeah poker face yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll call you Maybe, yeah, you're maybe. Like, <laughs> what was so far the fa- your favorite thing you ever worked on? Oh my goodness. Oh, such a good question. I have so many. I got the chance to do a psychic show. So being Ooh, really into like, uh, it was on LMN. It was called Psychic Intervention with Kim Russo. And just having the opportunity to work like on something like new age and spiritual because I'm so personally into that stuff was just such a trip. I loved it. It was a blast working with her. She was amazing. Was she the real deal? Yeah, she was the real deal. And we had some really great spirits, for lack of a better word, come through and uh, really help some people. So that was really just wanting to do all the spiritual programming anyway. That was a cool, you know, opportunity for me that I had the chance to do it once already. Fun. Did she, did she give you readings? Like, would she stop and read the crew? Uh, she did give me a couple readings, actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She actually kind of predicted that she was going to have a family before she had a family, which was kind of interesting. Yeah, that's true. Because we had talked about hard-headed because it wasn't, like, official then. And she said, you know, at some point your business partner might have a hard time juggling hard-headed because <laughs> she's going to have a family. And, anyway. And then the baby and here came. Here we are. Yeah, it was, uh, that was pretty trippy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's funny. I forgot about that. Yeah. So. How about you? 
Well, I, uh, well, when I, for, I never even said this at the beginning, but getting into TV, like, I always thought I was going to, like, play basketball for the rest of my life. That was, like, my first and only passion, like, my entire life. And, um, it didn't happen. Like, I had an injury when I was, like, kind of middle school-ish, and it, like, kind of changed my course or whatever. But I, you know, I was being recruited and things, and then, but I realized it wasn't going to be where I wanted to go and I wasn't going to get to play at the level I wanted to play. So then my dad's like, so what are you going to do? And he's He's like, like, I guess I'm not going to UConn. Yeah, yeah. He was like, (laughs) what else are, like, what else are you interested in? And I'm like, well, I love television. And like, here I am, you know, 20 years later and like, I'm, and I'm an executive producer, you know, and he's, he still laughs to this day because that's literally how I got like into TV because I was like, well, my basketball career is not happening anymore. (laughs) So to answer your question, my favorite thing I probably worked on is this thing called the circuit for Nike and it's a YouTube it was a YouTube channel programming but I got to follow this the EYBL which is the elite youth basketball league that Nike puts on and it's the top like 100 kids in America basically like in this league playing and they're all like in the NBA now like every year like you know they go into college for a year and then they're like the top recruits um into the NBA and so like that was just like a dream for me to be able to like everything yeah it was it was and it was like it was who I wanted to be you know and like then um I get to do it and I got to meet like Penny Hardaway who was like I mean I wore his I wore his shoes like my entire like life like you know and so like those are big moments I mean I I've, like, worked with so many celebrities, like, doing, like, other shows and things, and, like, that was my, like, moment. So, (laughs) yeah, so that was probably, like, my favorite. I mean, I enjoyed working on so many of my shows, but that was, like, the best. I still wish that existed. They stopped funding, so we don't do it anymore. But that was, like, so fun. Was there a particular Dr. Phil episode where you were, like... Oh my god, we really did something here today. <laughs> yeah, actually, there was a show. I did a lot of the parenting shows. Actually, mm-hmm. they had like a whole series back then. It was like parenting one on one, one on one, and they had you know a bunch of different topics. And there was actually a family that had just had uh, quad quintuplets, quintuplets, Ooh. five babies, right? Qu- yeah. yeah. Um, and so we ended up getting them a year supply of like diapers and Johnson Johnson and food and daycare, and that was like really a great moment of like giving back and really helping That's people. That's real tangible. Yeah. And I actually feel like I've had a lot of those moments, um, throughout my career, even working on deal or no deal, like helping contestants get on the show and winning a ton of money, like half a million dollars and, or giving them a trip or, you know, mm. some opportunity that they wanted, but couldn't ground for themselves. So I definitely feel like I've worked on a handful of shows where we've been able to give back, which is the best feeling in the entire world. And one of the reasons why I wanted to do television in the first place. So. Yeah, because how fun is that? Oh my god, it's just, it's amazing. It's just a way to help people in such a big way, which is like another goal of Heart Headed. Um, and yeah, and doing it at Dr. Phil was great, and you know, throughout various different shows has been such a gift. And do you have any crazy stories, like, I can't believe this thing happened on a set and somehow <laughs> we got I think it? something PG, yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's a good question. I mean, I can tell you, like, a tooth story from, like, Tyra. Like, yeah. I told you I would get teeth for, like, a lot of our, like, guests because, like, you have to have full set of teeth to be in talk. So if anybody wants to be on a talk show, make sure So you... even in a segment, you'd get them teeth. You would get them teeth. That's like, a good gig little... for a guest. Yeah, and this was, like, one instance where, um, like I said, back then you couldn't just snap a picture on your phone, so, like, they would send in pictures, like, on FedEx, and you would get them in the mail and be like, oh, thank God they have teeth, <laughs> and, like, they... And they wouldn't show their teeth in a picture, and you'd be like... Call How would you bring say, it up if they you didn't literally? Have I to. mean, it was awkward, but you just had to be like, "Can you send us a picture where you're smiling, showing your teeth, like without like trying to give away that you have to have them?" So then, ridiculous. how's the conversation if they don't have teeth? So we say, "Listen, you." Well, no, because I found like the miracle doctor in Burbank, who I don't remember his name now, but he used to turn around teeth in 24 hours. But we had this one case where like they sent a picture in, and it was like. Great. It was, like, perfect. Family, great story, cute family, like, let's bring them on. And then they show up day of because they fly in the night before. And the kid's, like, missing, like, half of his teeth. And, like, the picture they had sent was, like, shadowed, like, just right. So, like, you couldn't mm. see it. And was it, so, like, a little kid who was in the process of losing his it teeth? Was, no, it was, like, a like a teenager. Oh, and boy. it was, I mean, I know this stuff is so ridiculous. It's, like, this is more comical than anything that, like, but at the time it was, like, panic mode because, like, this is, like, <laughs> no, the life or death. Yeah, and, and um, 
to be honest, I don't, I'm sure we got him teeth. I don't really remember the end because I feel like I've probably like taken it and it like hard. put it way, way back in, the, in my head. But no, but that was like a funny one. Cause we're like, Oh my God, they like, do they know that we had, he had to have teeth to get on the show and like they perfectly shadowed this picture. So we couldn't tell, or was it just happened to be like, it was like, and so we had that picture like on the wall the rest of the season, like don't get duped by the shadow. Like it was, but I know that's like so absurd, but like I, it, like, teeth are important. No, honestly, they are important. I mean, I, to Americans. I, I, got, I have to tell you, people would be excited that we would get him for them, to be honest. I'm sure. Because a lot of the people that were coming on didn't have the money to do it. And so I was like, I mean, I was happy to be the tooth lady. That would be You're like, tooth okay, fairy. call him. Yes. <laughs> call him up and we have another one coming in tomorrow morning and I would go with them and they would be happy as pie to have their Because no one wants to not have teeth. No. No, yeah. It's just, but yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there's a million other You're things, but that just service. is the first thing that came to mind. Yeah. And, and, and I was giving back to the teeth. I th- I think one of the craziest things I had to do, this isn't necessarily like something that happened on set, but one of the craziest things that I um, had to do for a job was I was in charge of casting women in active labor. And so I was literally, literally living at the Pomona Hospital for a month, like 24-7, like walking labor and delivery and trying to find women that would be willing to be on a game show in active labor for TLC. And I hit the quota of women that I needed. <laughs> Hold <laughs> <And> on. <laughs> what were you wanting them to do? Like, were you going to shoot right then? It's, yeah, so basically it was a show for TLC that I did called Labor Games. And it was basically a game show in the delivery room with, when they were in active labor. And, yeah, so we shot with women that were between, like, one and, like, nine centimeters dilated, which was, like, insane. It got a little hairy when they were like eight and nine you centimeters. You see my face right now. Yeah. <laughs> and then what? Is your camera in their face answering oh, yeah. trivia No, it was questions? like a full on game show like in the room. So like, yeah, there was like cameras <laughs> rigged everywhere. There was like shooters. There was a game show host. Lisa, I love her. Lisa Arch. Now hold and- on. <laughs> Would you line them up while they were pregnant or were you literally like the first time they heard about it was when they were like, Arr. Well, that was me and Layla. We did Urgh. some vetting first, right? Because they also had to sign like their life away, twenty five pages of a contract. Yeah. So we did some vetting, but it was all like within like a few hours. It'd be like, <laughs> hey, it's two o'clock. Do you want to be on a game show like when you're having contractions in like six? And and people actually agreed, and we ended up getting like over twenty <laughs> couples to or mother daughter teams to be on the show. And so I went into this being like, That's how hilarious. am I ever going to cast this show? But I just was meditating. I just kept asking. It has the, to happen, so it always it has to happen. <laughs> the pregnant ladies, and it was a great show, and it was it was fun because it took their mind actually off of I was gonna say, kind of labor, and they won cool prizes and cash and. But it's not trips. your best moment to be on no. television. I, mean, I know. I don't. I would have said no. <laughs> you can look it up online. There's clips That's online. Labor what, games. what was it called? Labor games. I'm totally looking that up. <laughs> TLC. Yeah. It's yeah. ridiculous. Wow. Well done. <laughs> yeah. So you can produce anything. Pretty much. That's what I'm getting here. You guys can do anything. Oh, yes. Yes, we've, yeah, we've done. I'm sure there's a million other things that when we leave, we'll say, oh, my God, we should have talked about that one. You remember that? Because we laugh hilarious, like, hysterically all the time. It's an well, that's experience. One of, my, one of my favorite things to do is get producers together and be like, tell me your stories. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've heard lots. Oh, there's so many. There was Someone was telling me a story once about they were in... India or China or Africa, someplace very hard to get to. And they had all the equipment on a raft in the river shooting something, and the raft went down. Oh, <laughs> all their equipment was gone. Oh, they were like calling Malta to get new equipment. It was oh, crazy. Goodness. Yeah, that's, bad. that's a nightmare. Yeah. It's good stories. Good stories. Yeah. So, what is your, what all will your company offer? So basically, we can do it every, everything, right? So we do consulting for people that might not have the budget to hire us on fully um, for videos or for their projects. Um, if people like have sizzles that they want to pitch, like we're happy to pitch them or help them create a sizzle if they just have an idea. Then, of course, like if you want a video for your company, your service, your product, whatever it is, we do it all from like pre-production, creative brainstorming you know, figuring out like what cameras to shoot on, uh, and then making it happen. So directing, working with the talent, you know, full getting service. Lo- yeah, full service, getting the locations, clearance, etc. And then taking it into post production. So we work with amazing editors from like Top Chef and Shark Tank that do all the editing, color correcting, you know, music, stock photos, if you need it. So really, yeah, A to Z. 
pre-production through to post-production. Yeah, we've been doing this for 15 years, both of us, and so we've <laughs> run, like we just said, we've run the gamut of doing everything. You've seen it all. Yeah, and yeah. so it's like nothing is weird or out of our scope <laughs> because I feel like we, we could probably be like, oh, no, no, we've done that, or our friend's done that, <laughs> or, yeah, and, and we, you know, we have such a great group of people under our staff that, like, have worked on top shows and with us for years and that we just trust fully, so. Yeah, so really commercials, PSAs, documentaries, TV, digital. We kind of do it all between the two of us. So, Great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. Well, thank yeah, you. thank you for having us. You've been listening to The Other 50%, a herstory of Hollywood. I'm Julie Harris-Walker. I'd like to thank Carrie Maurer and Nina Gianelli for sharing their stories. And special thanks to Jay Rowey, Danny Rosner, and Allison McQuaid for the music. Please find us on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, Podbay, iHeartRadio, and YouTube. And subscribe and leave a review. And of course, on our website, theother50percent.com, all spelled out, for added features, bios of our guests, and the merch. Please go there right now and subscribe. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Other50% and Instagram at Other50% Podcast. Also, go subscribe to Exit 38, a new podcast from Sean Patrick Hughes and Emily Van Dyne. Thanks for listening. See you next time.